Family, welcome to our bonus reason why I believe that this upcoming Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, in this Jubilee year, indicates that the seven year tribulation is about to begin and the rapture resurrection event is about to take place. It's an incredible reason. Basically, it's the cherry on top of the first previous seven reasons I posted on our main channel. If you haven't watched that yet, you need to go back and watch that video first before you watch this one. That link will be in the description box below. So go back and watch that first and come back and watch this one. So that way this video will make sense. But be it as it may, if you already watched that video, then let's move forward with this video. Now, after you understand what I'm about to lay out for you in this bonus reason, it's going to show you how the two witnesses are going to show up onto the scene, where they're going to show up, what they're going to do, and how they're going to draw attention to themselves initially at the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. Doesn't that sound interesting? So let's get into it. Now, I already made the argument of why I believe that we are in a Jubilee year and how that lines up. This year, 2023, with the Day of Atonement, what's going to happen there with the potential rapture resurrection and the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. But now I want to point this out as well. Remember Jesus read in the synagogue, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he stops reading right there, and he closes the book. What do you do? When he got to verse 2, he only read the first part of that verse. And that verse was, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, which is the Jubilee year, and then he closed the book. If he would have kept on reading, he would have read the rest of that verse, which said, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn, Daniel's 70th week. But he wasn't declaring that at that time, was he? No, not at that time. He was only coming to establish his spiritual kingdom at that point, not his physical kingdom, which is encompassed in the second part of that verse. If he would have said the second part of that verse, he would have had to establish his spiritual kingdom and his physical kingdom, his millennial reign at that time. And evidently, that's not what happened. So here's my point. Jesus read the first half of that verse during the fall feast days at the beginning of a jubilee year, which means he would have read that verse on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. So here it is. If he declared the first part of that verse on the Day of Atonement on a Jubilee year, then it only makes sense that he should declare the second part of that verse on the Day of Atonement on a Jubilee year. And what is the second part of that verse again? And the Day of Vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. He's talking about the Day of the Lord there, Daniel's 70th week, the seven year tribulation. And guess what, folks? In just a few days, it will be the Day of Atonement during a Jubilee year. And one last thought. Will it be Jesus that walks in there and reads out of that book again to start Daniel's 70th week? No. You know who it's going to be? I believe it's going to be the two witnesses. They have a three and a half year ministry here on the earth that mirrors perfectly Jesus' three and a half year ministry. And Jesus kicked off his three and a half year ministry by ticking everybody off, reading the first half of that verse in public and proclaiming that he is their long awaited Messiah on a Jubilee year on the Day of Atonement. So it makes sense to say that the two witnesses will also kick off their three and a half year ministry by drawing attention to themselves just like Jesus did by reading the second half of that verse in public in front of everybody. My guess it won't be in a synagogue, it'll be right in front of the Wailing Wall because that is the common area where all the Jews congregate. And then Elijah will say, hey, I'm Elijah, the one you've been waiting for to show up. And since you all love the law so much, I brought Moses along with me. And I'm not here to sing and dance with you. Instead, I'm here to finish a verse Jesus started reading almost 2,000 years ago. Isaiah 61, verse 2, halfway through the verse. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. That's right. You're all a bunch, bunch of reprobates and need to repent. repent. Jesus, Jesus is, is the Son, the Son of God. God. He, he is, is your Messiah, Messiah and, and he's, he's returning, returning here soon. soon. We, we have, have the, the message, message of the truth. truth. 
All of you here, do not listen to the leadership here in Israel. They are following the wrong guy. He's the imposter. And to show that we're for real, we're going to stop the rain right now for as long as we want, and we are going to strike rivers and lakes and turn them into blood as much as we want to get you to listen to what we have to say. So that way you will suffer with hunger and thirst because there will be no water to drink and there will be no water for your crops. So you all better get to the repenting and start believing in Jesus as the Messiah. Now, after saying all that, they're going to tick off a lot of people. And you wonder why fire has to proceed from their mouth to protect themselves from anybody that tries to kill them. So consider everything that I just told you in the previous video and in this video, along with all the celestial signs taking place and all the activities of men all around the earth. Do you think the 70 tribulation is about to begin? I would say so. I don't know the day and hour of the rapture. It could take place anytime during these days of all that we are in right now, leading up to the day of atonement or the day of atonement itself or it could be fulfilled during tabernacles. I don't know. All I can say is though, the data certainly indicates that something big is about to happen. So folks, can you hit that like button, help us out with the algorithm, and please share this content with your networks. Comment, let us know what you think, and hit that subscribe button because we have more updates coming out. You don't wanna miss them. So that way you will stay connected with us and stay updated with new content coming out. May God bless you all and hang in there, for we are almost finished. Amen. Amen. Friends, if you haven't noticed, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. The seven-year tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, is at our doorstep, which means time is running out to get out there and do the work of our Heavenly Father, share the love and hope of Jesus Christ, not just here in America, but all around the world before that faithful day when we are all caught up out of here and our work here is done. And if you've been feeling that call to get out there to make a difference in God's kingdom, but you don't know where to start, Feed My Sheep Today is a great place to start because unlike other places, here you can make a direct impact for God's kingdom in growing the body of Christ immediately. While everybody else is investing money into big, beautiful temple-like buildings with huge parking lots, with big light shows and sound systems to preach a bloodless gospel, what we're doing here at Feed My Sheep today is simply taking all the funds coming in and investing it straight into the ministry. It's going directly into the missionary's hands within two to three days from the time that you give and they are buying Bibles in their own native languages and especially King James Bibles for the English readers and also everything involved with humanitarian relief aid that will be needed for that area. We just don't show up and start preaching to a bunch of starving, dying, unclothed people that are freezing to death. No, we do humanitarian relief aid first. We get everybody up to speed, and then after showing them the love of Jesus Christ in this manner, what we continue to see is people are really open to what we have to say after providing them this aid. And at this point, they are very open and welcoming to a faith-based message, the hope and love of Jesus Christ, the gift of grace that is available to them now because of the finished works of Jesus Christ at the cross, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. After sharing the gospel of grace with them, they showed great faith in that message that we brought forth to them, and they were saved for the first time in their lives by grace through faith, and we give them each their own Bible, and from that point forward, we will continue to teach them lead them and guide them and grow them as new members of the body of Christ. And this all happened because of your financial support. And you will see all the rewards from this at the Bema Seat Judgment because God knows this would never have happened unless it wasn't for your faithful giving. Trust me, he's keeping track of everything here. So right now, if you're feeling that slight pull, Please, don't ignore it. Just listen to what the Holy Spirit is instructing you to do. God wants to reward you greatly in this life for being a faithful supporter for his kingdom, 
and he's going to greatly reward you at the beam of seat judgment in our next life to come. Through all the gold, silver, and precious stones you've been sending up and compiling in heaven through all your works while you were here on the earth. And if you haven't done much in your life, this is a great opportunity for you to finish strong before we go home. Make up for lost time. And you can definitely achieve that through Feed My Sheep today. All you need to do is go to our official website. It's www.feedmysheeptoday.org. There you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, or just simply send your gift in the mail. Super easy website to use. Big buttons. Only take you about a minute and you are done. And please consider becoming a monthly sustainer. This is great for those who can't afford to make a big impact right now. Instead, you could do it over a long period of time. This will help us out greatly because if we know how much money is coming in next month, this helps us to coordinate and plan and set up these locations that we will be visiting the next month knowing that we will have enough funds to purchase enough Bibles and humanitarian relief aid that will be sufficient for these areas that we are planning on going into. Please, just $10 a month, that can make a huge difference. And don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel, Feed My Sheep Today, where you can see everything that we are spending the money on and all the new believers in Christ that came forth because of your financial support. Great in heaven will your rewards be. Thank you all so much for your support. May God bless you all.